We're really, really, really glad to be here. Uh, I am Professor Virginia Sanchez Coral, and I am Professor Emerita at Brooklyn College and former chairperson of the Department of Puerto Rican and Latino Studies. Hi, uh, welcome, saludos. I am Dr. Maria Perez y Gonzalez. I'm an associate professor in the Department of Puerto Rican Latino Studies at Brooklyn College and former chairperson of the same department. So welcome, we're really glad to have you here. Uh, and, we're really, and we're really glad to have a moment to talk to you about uh, our project and our involvement in the celebration of the 50th anniversary of Puerto Rican Studies. Absolutely. And so what we just finished seeing was the documentary, uh, Making the Impossible Possible. Uh, and I couldn't be more proud and happy that this came out at this time. Uh, this was um, commissioned by the Alliance for Puerto Rican Education and Empowerment, APRE, uh, a group of founders of the Brooklyn College Department of Puerto Rican Studies, students. And so we're really excited, as you saw, uh, their contribution. And this dovetails so nicely uh, with the book that Virginia and I are co-editing, um, Puerto Rican Studies in CUNY, the first 50 years. Uh, and yeah. the idea basically came up uh, about the book. Uh, Dr. Prudence Cumberbatch, the chairperson of Africana Studies at Brooklyn College, we were uh, talking a bit. Um, I was gonna step down as the chair um, the following May, and this was in the fall of 2019. Um, I'm sorry, in the fall of 2018. Uh, and so, uh, we were just talking about, you know, the 50th anniversary, and she suggested why not do a, um, suggest a special guest volume of Centro Journal. Uh, so I immediately thought, hey, that's, that's really good. Yeah, absolutely, we should do that. And of course, I contacted uh, Dr. Virginia Sanchez Coral, and um, we posed it to Centro Journal, and Dr. Toti, the editor, said, well, how about doing a book? And so you know, it took off from there. We're really happy that uh, we're looking forward to it coming out uh, at least by the summer, the fall of this year. That point really scared me because I was not ready to undertake uh, a job that I knew would take a great deal of research. And, uh, and I had thought about putting together our history many times while, while I was chairperson. Uh, when I was still active at Brooklyn College. Uh, but once I retired, um, my work took me into different, uh, different arenas. I began to do a lot of consulting. I, I, I wrote two other books that I felt had to be written. So I was really hesitant about taking on the responsibility of a book. But the point of it was that it had to be done because we were celebrating our 50th anniversary, what we call the first 50 years, because we're gonna be here for another 50 years. We thought that it was important to bring together the story of how, not only how Puerto Rican studies began, uh, not only the great uh, spirit and activism of our, of our young people uh, back in 68 and 69, not only the development of a department, uh, or at least the mandate to develop a department, but what actually happened afterwards? How did we have to struggle to create a department that had never been created before, uh, to produce curriculum, to graduate students, to deal in an environment that was less than friendly, uh, to be able to last 50 years is an accomplishment that we should all be proud of. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and the book is a continuation or sort of a, a second phase of what happened at Brooklyn College in terms of the Renaissance mm -hmm. Conference, uh, in terms of the Renaissance book that was published. So Virginia, why don't you share a little bit about that? Well, the Renaissance uh, Conference happened in uh, 1981, uh, 10 years after the department had been established. And it was pretty much the same idea. Let's, let's, we were in a period of crisis. Uh, most of our existence has been in a period of crisis. We were in one then, uh, looming threats of cuts, looming um, retrenchments. And uh, Maria Sanchez, who was the chairperson before me, uh, 
and was chairperson for 15 years, uh, and I followed her with 15 and you followed her with 17, uh, and you followed me with 17, uh, we decided that the way to celebrate, the way to honor the 10 years was to have a conference where we took a look at ourselves. What have we accomplished? What have we done? What are we doing? How have we in, how have we advanced academia? How have we advanced our community, our students? What have we done? What has to be done? What directions do we take? And, and uh, along those lines, that's sort of where, right? And it was not for just Brooklyn College. It was a CUNY wide, and actually uh, Mexican studies, uh, Mexican American studies, Chicano studies scholars joined in. Uh, African-American scholars uh, joined in with black studies. So it was right a conference where you sort of look at ethnic studies, what was going on, what were the issues, the challenges. So this book um, includes that, picks up from there, says what's been happening since then. We have great authors, um, prominent scholars uh, in Puerto Rican studies, uh, some of the uh, people, the pioneers. Uh, we also have newer scholars, uh, we have people from the community, we have um, PhD students, right, a writing as part of this, um, including, right, a student perspective on Puerto Rican studies and what it means. I know for myself, I could not be more grateful for Puerto Rican studies. I was a student at John Jay College of Criminal Justice, our sister CUNY College, um, and there for the first time, I mean, I had known about my Puerto Rican history somewhat. My father, right, being an independentist, uh, he used to speak about Puerto Rico quite a bit, but I didn't grow up with him. So when I, I went mm -hmm. to college, it became, I was like, wow, for the first time, this is about me and who I am. And that was in the 19, early 1980s. So imagínate, right, uh, there in 1969 and 1970, when this began for all of CUNY, Mm -hmm. Puerto Rican studies pretty much began at CUNY. So CUNY has that. Fue por, 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 <laughs> por llantos, right? And uh, for tears and for sweat and sacrifice. But, you know, CUNY students, Puerto Rican students, Black students in alliance with many other students, right? Uh, white students, Jewish students, um, Asian students. They were all saying, hey, where are we in this curriculum? We know we exist. We know we're in this country. We know we've contributed. Um, what's going on? And all <laughs> together, right? Those students joined together and showed the power of people, of activism. Not unlike the situation we find ourselves in at the current moment. So that the yeah. book that's going to come out soon is really exciting because we can see some of what had gone on then compared right. to what's going on now and as we move forward into the future. Yeah. You know, Maria, when you tell that story, uh, it makes me so proud because I was a student at Brooklyn College, graduated eight years before the struggles began. I know what Brooklyn College lacked. I know what it was like. And the way that I came into Puerto Rican studies was because Someone in my sociology class stood up one day and said, well, what, how, what have Puerto, Puerto Ricans ever done? And I didn't know. And I, I swore that from that point on, I was going to find out. And I was particularly, particularly focused on Puerto Ricans uh, in diaspora and, and that type of history because I had lived it. Uh, and what was amazing about it is that it took from that point on until today to, uh, to realize that my origins in Puerto Rican studies begins at Brooklyn College and ends at Brooklyn College. It's really fascinating. So you as a younger generation just make me feel that anything that we went through was an accomplishment. Absolutely. We, 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 we gave you a legacy. And, and then what do you do? Once, you, once you're handed a legacy, what do you do with it? You run with it, you go with it, you <laughs> inspire the next generation. And so that's yeah. what's exciting. Um, the Puerto Rican studies has changed, right? It hasn't just remained Puerto Rican studies. It often includes Latino studies, mm -hmm. um, uh, different backgrounds, um, depending right on what's gone on, the changing demographics. Um, 
our department still is Puerto Rican and Latino studies, just because of the unique situation that Puerto Rico is in, we cannot give that up, right? We should hold on to that because uh, it's going through a lot of trials, right? And tribulations, so to speak. Mm -hmm. so, so we must continue to focus on Puerto Rico. Uh, Puerto Rican studies, right? Um, when the students pushed for it, when they created it along mm -hmm. with the new faculty that came on across CUNY, right? The challenge was, what are we gonna do? How are we gonna do it? Well, culture, history, but it definitely, <laughs> the field, you know, this was gonna, this was new. How did they, how were they gonna create it? They definitely focused on various things and it was about the diaspora. It was about the diaspora understanding its roots, its connection mm -hmm. to Puerto Rico, uh, but what about here? Like what was going on here with the people, right? With Puerto Ricans. So it focused on the diaspora. It started to focus, right? Uh, urban studies. Uh, it started, it was interdisciplinary. Uh, it was intersectional in nature. It was um, anti-colonial, decolonial, and independentist leaning, because it was clear that Puerto Rico should not be a colony, but should be independent, right? That was, that was a lot of the motivation. Um, it, it, uh, right, it, it, the Puerto Rican studies surfaced uh, against the backdrop of the Vietnam War, right, of the civil rights movements. Um, and so all of that was connected. Um, so Puerto Rican studies was anti-racist, right? It, it uh, anti-racist pedagogy curriculum. It was trying to make sure that it, it found its way, right? Into American, US American society, right? That, that we were part of the fabric uh, of the United States um, that was trying to be denied, right? To these students. Um, so yeah. that's a fascinating journey that the students yeah. helped make that happen to to uh, change the ivory tower. So it changed it. That's it, students. Well, one of the one uh, one of the points that you make in your in your book, which happens to be, I think, uh, one of uh, one of Brooklyn College's shining moments, uh, was in terms of the academic uh, uh, structure. Uh, well, you write about how uh, how the uh, uh, following the struggle of the students uh, to gain a foothold in in the university, the next big battle was to um, to become a department that had was autonomous that could choose its own leader. And Brooklyn College didn't allow us to do that uh, when Maria Sanchez was the person that we wanted as chairperson. It took two years and it took another two years before she finally, finally uh, earned uh, the uh, academic credentials that she or the academic position that, that she was denied. Uh, and she was finally uh, declared the official chairperson of the department. But that battle for departments to be autonomous, to have a choice, in who their leadership was, didn't just affect Brooklyn College's Puerto Rican Studies Department, it affected the entire CUNY system. That is a battle that people don't know about. And I'm really glad that you wrote about it in the book because uh, it, that story needs to be told. And our, and our forefathers, the people who came before us, our pioneers, they have to be honored because they didn't have it easy. Uh, uh, and you know, every generation thinks that they're the ones that are that are fighting the battles. With so many of these battles were fought before, and because we live in a society that denies us our our history, our culture, um, where we're just beginning to make inroads, and we know how hard it is. We have to continue to honor the pioneers of Puerto Rican studies. So. Absolutely, absolutely. And the uh, authors in our book uh, really stress that, right? They sort of give that historical grounding, that anchor, um, and move along, move along. Mm -hmm. And they're honest about the challenges, and they're honest about the institutionalization of Puerto Rican studies. Que choca, right? Sometimes it, it um, how do you say choca? That it, it sort of bangs up against, right? The whole notion of community and serving community. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's been a constant um, challenge, right? Because mm -hmm. what the Rican studies was, yes, it was about 
trying to be great teachers, right? To educate uh, students to get the skills they need, uh, people skills, career skills, et cetera, that they need, right, for the future. Um, it was about scholarship and creating great scholarship and, and uh, documenting the history. Um, and, but it's also about service and right, reaching out to the community and making a difference in the community. You have to have a commitment right, to the community. That was what Puerto Rican Studies was about. Um, and so uh, those three pillars right, mm -hmm. are, are sometimes in tension with one another, but, but it's, it's developed in such a way that it's, it's, it's fascinating. And the, the story is captured, I think, quite well. Um, by the various authors, right, in, in mm -hmm. the book that we have. Yeah. So that's, that's I, exciting. I, I, I like I, very much how that story is captured. Because when you are now an academic department in an academic uh, uh, institution, uh, uh, part of a, a national, national system of, uh, of education, education in this country, country, you sometimes I lose the, those ties that give you uh, support, uh, that give you the, the reason for being uh, at the very, very beginning. And I love the way uh, the articles in our book point to uh, a sense of what the future is going to be in terms of, of the relationship of our um, field, field of study, study. Uh, with Puerto Rico and the archipelago. So um, I think that that's going to be a, uh, that's going to be something, something that will be talked about. about. Yes, and and so you know the documentary, right? Even though it's about Brooklyn College, it's also about the legacy of Puerto Rican mm -hmm. studies in general. It's sort of one snapshot, right? Uh, one profile of what went on um, throughout uh, CUNY, right? Throughout New York City and in other places, right? Where they started to mm -hmm. also establish. It's just that CUNY happened to be sort of the hub, right? CUNY is the hub of Puerto Rican studies. Um, but one of the articles, right, talks about beyond CUNY and, and those different campuses, programs, departments. And so, so that's exciting. So um, our book features uh, mostly the senior colleges, right? So that's another aspect uh, of our book. Um, although there were struggles at the community colleges, um, the departments and programs that were established mm -hmm. were at the senior colleges. So we had thought of, right, Virginia, this was part of, of the thinking that it would be departmentally based when we began the book. Um, we soon realized that there were many challenges with that. So while uh, many of the programs and departments, yes, are featured in the book, um, it was just very hard, right? Some of the archives were missing. And so we want to encourage all of you out there, if you have you know, historical documents, if you have <clears throat> memorabilia, pictures, whatever it is, uh, we're going to set up, uh, well, we've already set up uh, a digital archives, um, you know, collection that we want you to contribute to. Uh, so please, um, we're going to highlight it, but it's 50 years, five zero years of P-R-S hyphen C-U-N-Y at Brooklyn, spell it all out, dot CUNY, dot edu. So 50, the number 50, 50 years mm -hmm. of PRS hyphen CUNY at Brooklyn, dot CUNY, dot edu. Please send us copies, digital copies, right, of your works. That's also our regular email. So you can email mm -hmm. us and ask us about that. We might have to send you a, a Dropbox link. But please send us all of the documentation. The way I was able to do my chapter on Brooklyn College was because the files, there was many, many mm -hmm. files in the department, um, Milga Morales Nadal, right, a former vice president of student affairs at Brooklyn College and a founder of the department, she had many files. Antonio Nieves, right, who you saw featured in the film as well, uh, he has many pictures that he took. So um, different people came together to make that possible. And we realized that not all departments and programs, right, still have those. But some of you might have them at home. So send them to us. Um, we'd love to have them. We want to be able to set up a digital archive of that. So for, for all of CUNY in terms of Puerto Rican studies. Uh, so Virginia, anything else you'd like to add? Well, I was just, just thinking of where do we go from okay. here? Uh, once uh, once this, this, this story, story is out, uh, I think that we should make it a point to uh, continue to celebrate the gains Continue, continue to encourage, to encourage the, the activism 
uh, uh, and, and continue, continue to, excel to excel in in academia uh, uh, the, way the way we have been doing. Uh, but I think it's it's it's, it's been, been an been enormously an important and, and fascinating, fascinating journey, and I'm looking forward to the next the next phase. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And um, I, I just want to point out, right, that I am so honored to have had a co-editor that Virginia said yes, because, <laughs> if it, you know, it would have been so much more difficult to go this alone. And I was really, really uh, happy and thrilled that someone, you know, with the historical background, with the prominence that Virginia has achieved um, in this field, uh, you know, as one of the finest scholars that we have of Puerto Rican studies, which is also right a U.S. American story. Um, uh, I'm so glad that that you joined Virginia mm -hmm. and 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 that we're doing this together. I think this is so exciting, and it honors me to be able to to be part of this legacy, right? Uh, to be able to to move this forward. Mm -hmm. Our students from all walks of life, not just Puerto Ricans, right? But those who take Puerto Rican studies, Latino studies, Latinx studies, they um, they come with a desire to know more. Some of them learn about themselves and then some of them learn about their neighbors. They learn about their cousins. They learn about the family they married into. They learn about their best friends, right? So it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful field uh, that will benefit all students. We need to learn about each other. I constantly encourage my students, you know, take courses, Yes, in PEARLS, right, P-R-L-S, uh, but take courses in other areas of study, right, of Africana studies, go to women and gender studies, right, um, take all of these, whatever you can to learn uh, about the world around you, and, and Puerto Rican studies does that for people, um, and of course, right, 50 years ago, it was sort of like a really bad, uh, a really uh, a struggle, right, to even convince people to do that, but the students won, right, the students accomplish that. And so kudos to those of you who are still around and who are uh, the legacy and the pioneers of Puerto Rican studies. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you because I was a student of Puerto Rican studies, right, at John Jay College. Um, and I see the impact that our courses have. And, and it feels like home for many of the students. And so we have to move that along, right? When you have a positive view of yourself and your history and who you are and where you come from, you can change the world. Uh, and right with the students, with the pioneers, we see that many of these students were also Aspira students. Uh, and so that was a program, right, by Dr. Antonia Pantoja that, that helped instill in, in, in some of these students mm -hmm. that came from that to, to, to say, hey, we deserve to be heard, we deserve to be recognized, we deserve to be studied. And so this is the legacy years later. Um, and so I'm really excited about that. And I hope we can move forward uh, many more years. Thank you, Maria. I'm accepting, I'm accepting, I'm accepting your wonderful, wonderful words in the name of all of the pioneers who are out there <laughs> who have worked work, for, work, for, work, for, work, for work. The, these kinds of goals. And you do bring up an important point in terms of the institutions that we, that we have created. created. Uh, uh, in this in country, country, in this city, in this state. Uh, uh, our our is, if we don't create our institutions, nobody, nobody else, else will. will. And when we do create them, we have to safeguard them. We have to continue to, to monitor them. We have to have make, to make sure, sure that they, that they are, are representative of, of the goals, goals that we've established. That uh, and, 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 and we've and been able to uh, to include all of that information in the book as well. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, including thank you. the Centro, right? The Centro for yeah, Puerto yeah. Rican Studies and Puerto yes, Rican yes. Studies Association. That's all part of the legacy of Puerto Rican Studies. Right, right. So thank right, you. Right. We look forward to continuing to converse with you. <laughs>